Perfect. So as a starting point, welcome, 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 everybody. If, if this is your first time joining in, you're in for a special treat. So this is, these sessions are hosted by Kalam. And the whole idea of it, it's all about leveling up your communication using the Quran and the Sunnah. In particular, we divide it up into three parts. Communication with yourself, communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and communication with others. For today, we're going to be wrapping up the whole self, and that is articulating emotions. And you'll see, as you go through it, you're more than welcome to visit the archive of all the previous things that we've gone through. Masha, Brother Maruf dropped gem after gem as well throughout this conversation. For today, though, the whole discussion is about being able to articulate emotions. Now, Brother Maruf, quick question for you. Have you ever seen this before where you found some people who found it difficult or hard to express themselves. They, they feel a certain feeling, but they have trouble expressing themselves. Have you ever seen this phenomenon before? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, as a human being, sometimes I struggle myself. I think the people do not. I think I also have three kids. I see this a lot in kids, right? <laughs> they say one thing, but they mean something else. Interesting, yeah, with children, but sometimes it's hard even for adults as well. That muscle isn't outgrown at some point, and sometimes you can have a back to back. What are some examples of this? Spousal relationships, communication breaks down, you didn't tell me how you feel, etc. etc. When your sibling rivalry, not able to handle it, mother and father, you know, like being able, like parent and child. So, at the end of the day, articulating emotions is a key, key thing a valuable skill that we can all implement and so with today it's all about being able to articulate those emotions and we're going to dive right into that right here right now as the agenda of course i always if you're familiar by now I always want to make sure we're on the same page making sure that we're clear about what we mean by what are emotions then a little activity or a little resource and today is going to be more of a resource i want to share with you all that you can instantly apply, instantly use, because the goal here is not to delay. We have theory, we have some food for thought, but at the same time, food for thought doesn't get you anywhere if you're not able to eat it, right? So in the sense that you got to be able to really get into that. Then some, some thoughts from the Quran and the Sunnah, just one example, just to kind of paint a picture, some Q&A and a little preview for what we have in store for you next time, mashallah. So as a starting point, what are emotions? You know, for me, or you can look at the things in the dictionary. One more flavorful way of looking at words and the meanings are the origins of it. And if you look at the word emotions, you study the etymology of it. And for those of you who don't know what etymology is, it literally means the study of words. Ology means study of, eta means word the study of words and their origins, their roots. And if you look at it, the word emotions literally means to stir up. So Brother Mauro, if I can bounce off you for a moment, what's your initial knee-jerk reaction when you hear that, when you hear emotions stirring up? What, is that, what picture does that paint in your mind? Hmm. No, no picture, unfortunately. No picture? All right, not a problem. Well, at the end of the day, no worries, no worries. So the idea, like for me, like what I find is like, you know, when people get really in a rage, it's like a hurricane, right? Yeah, emotions get... Up, you mean the bottling up, that emotions bottle up, you mean... That's another good one. There you go. You can stir up, you know, bottling up, like yeah, that's another key here. Sometimes, but the thing about emotion, if you notice, when you stir something up, it's very fluid, isn't it? Like you're not, you're not in one state or in one emotion all the time. You know, and you, you notice throughout the day, you're not like constantly cool as a cucumber. We like to think so, but there are certain nuances that can remove or hinder our emotional. If you stub your toe, how about that? You ever had that feeling before? You stub your toe at the bedside, all, all of a sudden you're going to be cheery and smiley and you're going to continue to smile through. No, emotions happen. So the key here, at least one picture to just paint is about stirring things up and making things fluid. Uh, so now, what can you do about this? We talked about articulating emotions. You've seen it before, time and time again. Maybe someone who's watching this is saying, well, I'd like to be able to articulate myself a little better when it comes to emotions. Well, how do I do that? 
And here's one resource I can humbly offer. And the whole idea, I'll explain this in a moment here, when it comes to building your emotion vocabulary, it's just like learning a new language. If you want to study French, what do you do? You build up the vocabulary so you're able to express yourself. So chances are that's just we're talking as an English speaking, you know, in an English speaking conversation. What are some emotions that, you know, you can use and how do you express that? You build up that vocabulary. One resource that I can I could offer as a starting point, it's something called the emotion thesaurus. And what is this all about? In case if you're wondering, it's essentially for creative writers. You know, Hamza, I've been very fortunate, a lot of fun facts for those who may not be aware that Hamza, I've been very fortunate to publish um, two novellas and writing short story, writing um, fiction is tough. And you'll quickly realize when you're, when you're writing something, especially in English, you'll realize how limited the vocabulary can be. There's only so many ways you can say the character is mad or agitated or frustrated. And you're trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to express this character's emotion? And you'll find that it's tough because we have limited vocabulary. Imagine, Brother Maruf, if you, Masha, you're well read, so you can draw from things. But if someone doesn't take the time to read, build up that vocabulary, it's not going to, it's not going to, you know, end very well because. They, they have a feeling, they want to express it. And you mentioned your kid, um, they, they don't know what to say. So building that emotion vocabulary, that's the thing instantly that you can try. And this emotion to source is one thing that you can use right off the bat, like to get, guide you along that journey. And so when it comes to, so Brother Maruf, if I can ask you, um, have you ever had, maybe not necessarily fiction, but have you ever written articles or blog posts and you've had those moments where you're like, I, I just don't know the words what to say. How, can you walk us through that a bit? Yeah, sure. So, you know, we have the marketing agency. So one of the things we do is that uh, we do a lot of copy. Uh, I used to write a lot, maybe not as much as I think, but still write copy sometimes. So I think the main difference between novel and the copy for the audience or the masses is that uh, it's a bit different. Like you want to get the message through as simple as possible but you want to stay away from the very eloquent words instead you want to focus on the words that everybody every day use you know there are, i think there's around 2000 words in english and in, in, in any language you take they're common words that make up probably over 90 percent of the what we use every day the rest 10 percent probably is for the eloquent people who use the very Really uh, big word. So, I mean, this is the main difference. So what I'm trying to say is that what we do is we do write, but we, we try to stay uh, away from the very big uh, words instead try to focus on the smaller, I mean, the more easy to understand. Try to, our job is to try to keep it simple, the message as simple as possible. Interesting. Marshall, you brought up a very, very, very good point when it comes to that. So there's, there's a difference. You can see right then and there. If the whole effort when it comes to, let's say, in the workplace, I mean, you don't want to make it like a, like a novel or, or a script or you don't want to make it so convoluted that it's so hard to understand. At the same time, though, this is the, the exact tools that we might be missing out when we're trying to build our emotion. You'll notice when it comes to screenwriters, directors, people in the movie industry, you'll notice if you hear their interviews, if you hear their interviews, um, uh, you'll see they're very colorful with their language in terms of how they look and how they express themselves. A lot of times it could be that. So it depends as well. If you're in the scientific field, if you're in that scientific world, of course, you're maybe not be able to describe such and such in, in these kind of language. But here you go. That's, this is that muscle that we can work with. So building your emotion vocabulary. Now, one thought about this, one little excerpt I want to just highlight here. You'll see, you can grab something out of it. Now, here's a little excerpt from the intro. It's one of their philosophies is to identify the root emotion. Certain situation can arouse a single, easily identifiable emotion. But more often than not, human beings feel more than one thing at a time. Hence the stirring up, right? Things are fluid. If you're struggling with how to convey this conflict to the reader, take a step back and identify your character's root emotion. This is the catalyst that dictates any other feelings that your character might also experience. Once you've found the root emotion, look to the corresponding thesaurus entry for a range of suggestions. That's how you can use this resource particularly. 
the may escalate to field can also provide a logical progression for where your character's feelings might be headed. Once you've clearly shown the root emotion, you can layer other emotions onto a lesser degree and map out the full experience. And mashallah, one of the things that I got just from this little thing here, a couple of things to just take away. Number one, we have primary emotions. You know, I, I guess for some, maybe are familiar with the movie Inside Out. What are they? Like anger, fear, joy, disgust, fear. Um, I said fear already. So uh, sadness, I think. Yeah, so those are like some, we got some basic emotions. But then there are some nuances. And those nuances, that's what I think we were talking about before when it comes to having that hard time expressing ourselves. Because we, we know what it's like when someone's angry. I'm so angry. I'm so upset. I'm so sad. I'm so frustrated. Yeah, but when you have those nuances, that's where the language comes into play. But look here. This is the really cool thing I find about this particular resource is the may escalate to field. Have you ever seen this situation where you have two people having a conversation? One person says something wrong. Another person takes it the wrong way. Then suddenly they fire back. And then suddenly it gets, it's escalating, isn't it? That's how fights start. So the key here, one of the interesting things to note, at least based on this resource, is that it's not only being able to identify what the feelings are, but being able to know where it's going. You ever have a fight or, I mean, I'm sure you've had a confrontation once or twice in your life, Brother Maruf, haven't you? Where could you see things you would, you know, we wish we live in a world where everyone's all rosy and everything's all great and, you know, everybody can sing Kumbaya and whatnot and everyone's in good shape. But at the same time, conflict is a natural part of life. You're going to run into people who don't agree with you. You're going to run into people who just, they just don't jive. And sometimes it could lead to conflict. But being able to identify where things may escalate to is a key thing, I think, with that will help be able to not only identify your own emotions, okay, where am I headed with this, but also where other people could be headed to when you're dealing with them. Any thoughts on that, Brother Maruf, if I may? Yeah, so wh while you're speaking, I was thinking, that that's the, I think it's from the book, makes sense. Um, I think maybe not everybody is a writer. Somebody is going to write the book, but I think what the lesson we can take from here is that if you can articulate how we feel, this is where you measure where you are first, right? And you take it the next action. So if you're looking at this right now, if you're listening to us, instead of looking at, oh, what am I going to write a book? Why do I need this? So think about a different way. You don't have to write a book. You can still read the book and get the lesson, which is to identify where you are. Are you sad? Are you frustrated? Are you like, you know, what, what is your feeling? And, and first you have to identify that feeling, right? That's the core. And then it will go to the next step. How do you change that state? Isn't it true? Does that it make sense? Makes sense. Yeah. So maybe just to reiterate, Jazakallah Khairan, and just to clarify, this isn't meant for, not just for writers. The whole tool of using this is to, it's not to say like, well, I have to be a writer in order to understand this. I'm saying, think like a writer. That's the idea. You don't have to be a writer, but if you think like one, it's going to help you articulate your emotions better. Because again, there's a whole another discussion that we can go into when it comes to there's a there is a dis, there is a clear clear relationship between thinking and writing. There is a relationship. Those who tend to write really really well, they tend to think really really well. Why? Mm -hmm. Because you're able to narrow down your thoughts, be able to articulate. Again, why is it so hard for people to leave comments on YouTube? Why is it so hard for people? Why is it easier to just click on view rather than? make a blog post why is it so difficult why is copyright you mentioned like you're in a in marketing copyright isn't that a skill that's if you want to do it really really well it, it takes a lot right to be able to distill and think through it so the key here is that for this particular resource it's not just for writers it's be able to think like a writer so that way you can apply it to yourself and you never know maybe you might find that unbridled love of writing i never knew that myself i didn't expect it but here we are so great points mashallah Good point. Now, let's move on to sources of the Quran and Sunnah, of course. We want to always relate back and tie it back. That's the thing to anchor. With the Quran, as you know, we're, we're looking at this from the English translation, the clear Quran by Dr. Mustafa Khattab. But I, again, I acknowledge and I recognize that this has no comparison to the original Arabic language. 
the original Arabic language is full of amazing miracles in and of itself. And this is where I invite you, for the viewers, if you would like to take that next step looking into um, what the Arabic has in store, by all means. What I'm trying to get at, at least with this, for those who speak English and those who use English, how can we at least get at least a little, a fragment at least, of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is conveying to us? You will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses very vivid, vivid imagery. And it's all about the way and how it was articulated. One example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that indeed it is we, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who created man, humankind and fully know what their souls whisper to them. And we are closer to them than their jugular vein. Closer than your jugular vein. Now, pause. How many people feel lonely these days? How many people feel like they have no one to lean on? They have nobody. Especially we're now in social media. We're more connected and disconnected than ever. Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is communicating or articulating this feeling of closeness. It's one thing I can tell you, Brother Maruf, I can say, hey, Brother Maruf, I'm very close to you. That's one thing I can say. But if I say I'm closer to you than your jugular vein, for those of you, and I'm not a biologist, I'm, I don't claim to be a scientist or biologist, but a simple search would know that with a jugular vein, the whole point of it is to transport, I believe it's oxygen, to the brain and to the heart. Like there, it's like a highway. That's one way you can look at it. The jugular vein is to the brain and to the heart. That's the whole purpose of it. Now, if you cut off that highway, what happens? Have you ever been on a traffic jam? It was just yesterday I was in a traffic jam. It was great, huh? It was fun. <laughs> like if you're on the way and all of a sudden there's a traffic jam, nothing quite like it. But imagine if that highway is broken or gone. There's no pretty connection to your brain and your heart. It's finished. But see, so, Allah, so look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is articulating closeness. It's not just to say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is closer to us than the highway that is going to your brain and to your heart, subhanAllah. And, um, you know, that's one. And this is English. Like, imagine you go into the Arabic and imagine what you can figure that out. Brother Maruf, any take on this? Curious. Yeah. Um, what I'm thinking is... Um what the part it says what their souls whisper to them um that, that's the part that we were discussing if you remember the, in the previous sessions that in a dialogue right yeah. there's the soul streams of thoughts coming to you all the time good ones and bad ones and bad ones and good ones okay and bad, blah 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 all the time i think the question is first thing is you notice them right you don't have to take action all of them you have to notice them and you have to know their sources, where they're coming from. At the end of the day, as you said, um, I think the key part is before you take any action. I remember there were moments that maybe there are moments in our lives we are really elevated, right? At that moment, taking action on tough stuff is easy. However, if you're feeling down, any bad thought can take you down, right? Even a small thing, like you may feel weak. So the question is, you have to be really aware of this thought, they are incoming. As long as like our, your heart is beating, these thoughts will keep coming. Number two is you have to really watch your state, right? When you're uplifting state, when you are strong, you can take the bad thoughts away. When the good ones let it in, act upon it. But you have to be very careful when you're in a state, let's say sadness or depression, right? Any small thought. Can, can enter in and you, like you don't know what's going to happen, right? So the key is, and that to, to one of the ways to control is input. Like, as you mentioned, social media, we go to social media now, for example, like Instagram uh, and other places that every, you see everybody's happy, everybody's laughing and sunshine and there's and say, wow, their life is cool. Look at my life. What am I doing? I'm just sitting here doing nothing. And you feel bad. It just makes you feel bad. You know, there's even the studies that actually specifically um, like it put you in a state that your life is kind of worthless without purpose. Um, I think that's very key is that, and we have a solution for that, right? As a Muslim. Uh, but we have to understand, as a Muslim, we have to pray five times a day. We have to remember why we do what we do. And also resetting our ultimate goal. Not like 
five minute fame on, on social media. And um, if you don't understand that, as you said, it will come back and it's gonna affect our who we are and all we do. So I think that uh, today's one of the lessons I'm learning is that um, first of all, identify your emotions where you are. Number of, be mindful of your thoughts. Number three, go to the reset button. Go to reset button, right? Which is going back to prayer and remember the bigger picture. And whatever you are saying, also to see what you're saying is not real. People want to put a rosy picture because uh, maybe they have nothing else to do, you know? And to be honest, most of the hardworking people, most of the people that are doing the hard work don't even have time for social media to do and show on what they're eating right now. <laughs> you don't have to promote everything. So what I'm saying is you have to, especially, I think this one affects especially a lot of teens. That's why, for example, personally, I have, I didn't buy mobile phones to my kids. I'm not going to buy them because I know where it's going to end up, right? Uh, and and, and it's be something we should be very, very, uh, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, if you're a teen, if you're young, younger, you have to be mindful. Even for the adults, like we have to be very mindful uh, of the of the effects of social media and the similar tools. 100%, you touched on another big topic here. Social media, that's a whole can of worms by itself. I hear you loud and clear, Sopala. But when it comes to our, th that's a good thing because a lot of times with social media, it masks your true emotions, isn't it? You leave a comment or something like that. You're happy. You're happy all the yeah, time. Yeah. How many, how many times have you seen people like write LOL, but they never laugh? Like, you've seen that people like LOL or they're, they're, they're laughing, but then they're like, their face is all like serious and they're not really giving a thumbs up or not genuine. So that's another whole, another dichotomy in terms of what we're talking about, because it adds a whole another layer of, is this person that what I'm talking, like when I'm speaking with this person, at least virtually, is this person really conveying the proper emotions or is it a cover up or a mask at some point? Right. So at the end, Spala, just it's it's a whole multi-layered thing but at the end of the day you know what we're saying and suggesting isn't like a checklist or some sort of you know laundry list of things to do you know as they say a moment of patience during a moment of anger can save you a lifetime of regret as human beings as much as we like to think that we're logical at the end of the day we're emotion emotion is what drives us you see an emotionally charged picture people go out you know people are moved if I can present you logic and facts and here's the numbers, this, that, and the other, it's not going to move you as much. But if I was to share a story, a really sad story of so-and-so or such-and-such, chances are it's going to move you. So at the end of the day, if we're able to master this and keep an eye out, like you mentioned, like be on guard, essentially, then we're going to be in much, much better shape. So, Masha, just to sum up with this, this is one example. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is communicating with us are really articulating See the emotion of closeness, of friendship, of, of, of this. Look at how Allah sponsors us. That's a very powerful image. I don't know about you, but for me, like this is a very, very powerful image. Closer to you than your jugular vein. When you study a little bit of the jugular vein and what that really means, you're like, Spa. now you're, you're saying, when you got God, you got a friend. I remember I heard that been put like that. So if you got God, you have a friend. So that's one thing. Now let's move to the sunnah. I'll give you another example. Man, inshallah, I know we're maybe zooming ahead to Ramadan, but before you know it, Ramadan is going to be right around the corner. Spot always happens year in and year out. So look at this for a moment. There's a very famous hadith, and we'll we'll see how what we can draw from it. Rasulullah tells us that, like you know, that fasting is a shield. Uh, this is in Sahih Bukhari. I mean, so when one of you fasts, he may not be obscene or boisterous. If someone insults him or fights him, let him say, "Indeed, I am fasting." You know, I am fasting, I am fasting. So what, am, what does this have to do with this whole conversation of articulating emotions? When you and I are fasting, we don't have food in our system. And chances are we can get hangry, I heard of him put like this. Hungry and angry. So we're hangry. And in those kind of moments, in those kind of states, chances are the tiniest of things can really set us off. And I've seen it, my, I've seen this personally myself. Alhamdulillah, I was very fortunate to, um, to go to Umrah a number of years ago. And I remember right after Fajr, this is during Ramadan, I remember I saw one person was immediately fighting another individual right after Fajr time. In, okay, we're fasting. We just prayed Fajr in the Haram. And what do you see? These people are going off one or the other. So 
immediately I'm thinking to myself, look at how this dean is very practical and teaching us not just how to feel, but what to say, right? And I'm fasting. I'm fa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us the formula, the tools. What are you doing? You say, I'm fasting. Rasulullah Islam is giving us. So sometimes you may know what you feel. You feel agitated. Again, you've been going through, uh, now in Canada, I think it's like fasting is what? It's a number of hours, 14, 15, 16, 17 hour days, like where it's, you know, pretty long, tired, agitated. Let's say if you have kids, your kids do something. Mm, this all boils up. You're stirring the pot. It gets up there and so what do you say what do you do you have all this emotion but you don't know what to say and express yourself so look at that i am fasting just remind you have to say it out loud verbalize it i'm fasting what are you doing i'm fasting and this will click because sometimes you got to say it out loud while you're doing what you're doing so being able to even articulate that at these tense moments can really make a big difference and so paula again i've seen it i'm sure everybody has a story in and of itself when they when they have a moment when it comes to fasting. Do you have a story like that, Brother Maruf, or any any observations about this particular section here? Uh, yeah, well, what, just on the sunnah, one, uh, one hadith comes to mind when we're talking about emotions is that uh, I think, as the said, I think there is a, there is a, there is a part of the body uh, that in human beings, if that one is is healthy, the whole body is healthy. If that part is not healthy, the whole body is not, right? And, and that one, uh, and he mentioned it's, it's the heart, right? The, when we talk about the heart, the one thing about the heart is the physical organ, which is your heart, like it pumps the blood. But I think in this context, it's not just that part, but also the center of your being, right? When you talk about the hearts, we're talking about what? We're talking about emotions and feelings, isn't it? That's what it is. Um, so you have to take care of that part, right? And also in Arabic, as you know, it means qalb. Qalb means something actually fluctuates up. And that's what you mean, right? It just goes up and down. It just, you don't know where it goes. So so one moment you may feel happy, the other moment you are not. And you don't know, even know why, what happened. And one of the things I kind of figure out for myself is that there's a saying, it's called, we think, I feel good, did I do things? That's what we think, right? No, I'm not feeling good right now. When I feel good, I will do this. But what we think is emotion creates motion, right? But in reality, it's different. Actually, emotion creates emotion. You know what I mean? So for example, try to walk in the fresh air, five minutes, 10 minutes, and see how you change. Like imagine you are really frustrated. You don't know what to do. You're sitting in a room or office. You're really frustrated. Something is bothering you. And it's just sitting and trying to go to and just mindlessly going to social media or doing stuff. Just take a walk one-on-one -on -one with yourself in the nature or just in a neighborhood, five minutes, 10 minutes. That clear, it will clear your head, right? So what you're doing is you're taking a fasting from everyday entry, actually you're taking a fasting, right? In that same way, this fat way of fasting is like when we think about fasting, it's not just only food, right? That's what it is. It's not just food. It's what you say. It's what you think. You're taking a fasting from everything and just calming things down. Because why? Because you want to, because when the dunya, right? When the material world gets in, if everything is bombarded from different parts. When you're fasting, we're saying, hold on, just slow it down. Slow it down, get some clarity so you are better in a better shape to see what's going on. Um, that's what I noticed. So, so notice is that fasting is not only about food, it could be thoughts, it could be actions. And another thing is the take care of your heart, the, the source, the center of your feeling and emotions, because it's everything you do will be based on that. If you're not feeling good, you, there are not that many things you can do actually, right? So to do good, you have to, prepare and plan and act, create the motion, create the emotion. So that's what it is. That's for me, that's what it means. That's what it is. Mashallah, man. So it's a reverse. I hear you. So sometimes some people feel like, okay, I got to feel good in order to work out. But if you just go to work out, then it creates so You feel good. <laughs> Interesting. And, that, and I think that might explain why a lot of people procrastinate, right? And I'm including myself in this conversation. Sometimes we want to get something done. 
okay, let me wait until I get in the mood, then I can get it done. But actually, when you start doing it, that's when the mood gets created. Um, so, and you know the saying is that the appetite comes at the time of eating, right? <laughs> You're right, exactly. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm not hungry, I'm not hungry. I'll, oh, what's that again? Oh, oh I guess I could, I, could, I could fit that in. All right, makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, you're right, hundred percent, Masha. And it's good that it, that you you know drew from that, not only relating it to the heart and about emotions, hundred percent. There you go. So fasting again is not just limited to the food, but you know, look at that. See if if someone insults or fights, unfortunately, see look if someone does that. We wish we live in a rosy world. Inshallah, when we get to Jannah, that's where everything will be cool. Everything will be all right. But aside from that, in this day and age. You can't escape it, but you got to remember and remind yourself at all times. So having said that, the last little thought I'd like to share with you all is that emotions are precise, but words aren't. Emotions are precise, words aren't. What do I mean by that? Is that you can feel a certain feeling and to you, it means everything. To you, you can really understand. You can really feel it in the depths of your soul what you're feeling right now. If you get really, really agitated, somebody triggered you by saying a certain word, you understand, you know, you're, it's like a volcano erupting. But words aren't able to ca completely capture. How many times have you heard people when they become a success story? How do you feel right now? Oh, this is so surreal. I don't, I don't know what to say. This is amazing or uh, so emotional. Or maybe even when a tragedy happens, how do you, I can't even put that in words. You heard these phrases before. Words are not precise. Words aren't able to completely capture the whole situation. But at the end of the day, what I'm conveying to you and what I'm sharing with you is that just because it's not, doesn't mean that you and I can't try. The more we're able to articulate ourselves and get closer and closer to that meaning, the much, much better off we're going to be. You know, if you, the next time you get into an argument with your spouse, it's not enough just to say, I'm mad. Okay, well, what's going on? Like, if you unpack that more, expand that vocabulary more, really dig deep into it, think like a writer. Okay, what, what, how would I describe this character? If I was a character, how would I describe this character going through this emotion? Okay, the more things that you can think of and the more that you practice, the more tools you have at your disposal, right? Like I mentioned, I don't know if you caught it right now. I said erupting like a volcano. Some people are dormant. They are just nothing. And then suddenly something erupts like a volcano. Right. Some people, it's like you have to walk on eggshells. You got to be extremely careful what you say because you never know. You step on one thing, it's just, you know, everything just goes off. So at the end, that's my humble invitation to everyone that emotions are precise, but your words aren't. But the more we work towards it, the better off you're going to be. And so for next week, inshallah, it's going to be all about communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We've concluded, alhamdulillah, the whole idea of your inner dialogue. Next is going to be your communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why we're doing this now, not in the beginning. You would think, oh, the creator, everything, it starts and ends with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you, because again, not everyone's communication with, not everyone's relationship is going to be the same. Not everyone's relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't take that for granted. We don't say, you know, we assume anything. Everybody has their own unique relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether there is or isn't. So, but at the end of the day, you are with yourself. You live in your own skin. You know, you have your own stuff. And so if you're, if we don't tackle that first, how do you expect to communicate with our creator if we are not able to take care of ourselves? And so inshallah, that's the prep work. And inshallah, we're going to go into shukr, fikr, dhikr, and sabr. We're going to combine them all to make it a nice little package here. Mashallah, Brother Maruf was very, very generous and Hamza very helpful in terms of putting this all together. So we're grateful for that. And that is articulating emotions. Mashallah, Sister Hodan's been, you know, on standby with the questions and answers. So if there are any, I'm more than happy to, we're more than happy to kind of take some. If not, Sister Hodan, if there's anything you'd like to add, any parting words or thoughts, more than happy to hear that. Let's see. She's okay. If not, Brother Marup, do you have any parting words? Any thought? Or oh, uh, good. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Assalamualaikum yeah. warahmatullah. Um, Jazakallah khairin for no. I I wasn't aware that was uh, unmuted. So, okay. Because um, when I tried last time, it was uh, I wasn't able to unmute myself. In any case, alhamdulillah, Jazakallah khairin. I I really appreciate you know 
everything you've shared. I think the only thing that I would add to this um, is we struggle to acknowledge our emotions. And why is that, that we struggle so much to acknowledge our emotions, even like uh, to the point that we're not being honest with our emotions? That's a question. Oh, very much. But Marv, do you want to share something? And then I have something to say as well, but. No, no, go ahead, share. I mean, I mean, Sister Khalil is right on point. We, we don't acknowledge, right? We are not right. honest with ourselves. Makes sense. So I would, right, my knee-jerk reaction to that is perhaps the way how our society is built, or particularly the values that were placed on us from kids. Now, example, right? One of the th let's talk about the boys, the brothers for a second. You talk to a boys boy. Boys don't cry. Boys don't cry. You just nailed it, right? You're already ahead of me right there. Exactly. Don't cry. If you tell someone that you like, let's just say down the line, uh, and this is like saying in a, let's say in a non-Muslim context, let's just say in that scene where they're saying they tell, uh, they tell someone that they like what happens, they get rejected, they get laughed at. Okay, so if I tell someone I like them, then all of a sudden I get rejected. Okay, if I don't tell someone I like them, somebody else will take them. So then what do I, so now all of a sudden, so that's one thing, that's one example there. Uh, yeah, boys don't cry, man up, make sure that, you know, shrug off the tears and just, you know, get in the game. And you see what ends up happening, like Brother Maruf will circle back to the very beginning, bottling up. And this is for sisters as well. It's fun. A lot of sisters, maybe they're unable to communicate and convey because a lot of times the family values or the way that the society, society rewards people who are masking their emotions. That's the bottom line. They were, that, that's the way unfortunate reality of the situation is, right? Sister, I'm sure you can see that in, in many cases where, you know, we always say honesty is the best policy, but truth be told, right from the get-go, in the workplace, how many people are honest? How many people lie, cheat, and steal to get to the top? How many people mask their emotions because they're afraid of the repercussions? So I would say that because of those negative experiences, we've learned not to acknowledge and aggress and suppress and do all of that. Cause, and then eventually you'll see small as human beings, it's going to erupt again. It's dormant. And then eventually everything just gets out of line. Right. So. Yeah. Does that answer? I, I would, I would, yeah, I would agree with you. Um, I think society lacks the empathy um, to like acknowledge people's emotions. And so people learn to mask it. And uh, you often hear, people who are who have those skills or who have um, the ability to express their emotions um, um, they say that oh they wear their um, heart on their sleeves there's a saying they, they wear their heart on their sleeves you know like and it's not said in a positive way it's said in a negative way like you know um, and I think as people grow wiser you realize that being able to actually uh, acknowledge and express your emotions is um, is a positive thing. It's uh, it's a skill, and it is definitely something that can help you to live an authentic life. If you want to live an authentic life, that is exactly. Yeah. Well, one of the things we have to remember is when we keep talking about society, we think about it's, it's something out there that's pushing us. But we have to remember who is society? What is society? Is a group of people. It's us. I'm a part of society, you are a part of society. So when society, when we are saying society is doing that, what we are saying is a group of people doing that, right? And that's true. So somehow everybody's afraid. Everybody's afraid. They are not willing to go. So everybody stays this face. Everybody's happy, like nothing is going on. Um, that makes the society and we make up these rules. Okay, this is a rule of the game we're gonna play. And we let's pretend everything is fine. Let's pretend that nothing is going on here. And 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 eventually it doesn't, it doesn't benefit anybody at all, right? So what ends up happening is we end, end, end up living to make someone, somebody happy all our lives, right? Everybody's trying to do that. But in reality, uh, you're not true to yourself, to your fitra, right? Your natural disposition. What happens is that you don't feel uh, this joy anymore. You just feel like you're depressed, deep down, trying to please everybody. And say, no, why bother? You know, you don't get indifferent apathy. It creates this apathy, indifference. That's even worse. And um, so the key is, I guess, do uh, you remember one of the things I think uh, we discussed in our journey is that one of the key is that what what is what game am I in? Am I gonna 
play the game where I'm going to think about what everybody thinks about me or I'm going to be true to myself, you know? And I think that's the decision we have to make at some point. And at the end of the day, look, it's just in 50 years, we all be gone. Uh, people before us, they were gone. People after us, they will be gone. It's just the nature of human being. At the end of, the year, at the end of your time, and I think people wouldn't say and say, you know what, I should have pleased more people. I don't think people say that. What people may say is that, well, I regret I have not done this or I have not done that. So the thing is, we have to think about the time is coming. The time is coming. Just, it's just inevitable. The question is, what kind of life am I going to live? Am I going to live that is going to be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, true to myself? Or am I going to live a life that's going to please everybody, which is not possible, Right? We cannot please everybody because everybody is different. Think different. They will have all these different ideas. We don't like even like everybody. So why are we trying to play this game? That's not the game we should be in. That's the wrong game to play. Uh, that's my that's my two cents on that one. Mashallah, your two pennies right there. Alhamdulillah. But I guess, Spal, you spawned another thought here when it comes to a lot of people. Maybe they can't handle rejection. All in all. Right? They can't handle disappointment. They can't handle disapproval. Some people can't handle conflict. So as a way, masking that, and especially as early as childhood, when, you, when your parents, let's say, are not pleased with you in some way, shape, or form, that's where the bottling up starts. And, when, and speaking to Brother Maruf's point about the society, imagine that's in one family, right? Now, now take that and multiply it across the board. How many, how many of us, like Sister Hodan, how many schools have you heard of that taught, that teaches like tools on how to be more resilient? I've never seen, I, you know, that's just one example, right? Like life skill, it's a soft skill nonetheless. It's not like math or science or anything. We can't expect everyone to do everything, but how many times have you heard that? Right? I know you wanted to unmute. Yes, no, no, that's, that's you, you make a very good point. And um, I think, one of the th skills we have to learn or um, unlearn, whichever one word is better, is that we need to reject rejection. And how do we do that? But that's like an another total new conversation right there. You know, subhanAllah. 100%. But Marshall, again, if we can't handle it, again, it's less tools at your disposal. If your only tool is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. If all you have is this hammer, every problem you think is a nail. But if you have a hammer, you have a saw, you have a, you have a screwdriver, you got this, like that, then you can handle certain situations in different ways. So that's why when you acknowledge your emotions, okay, I'm feeling really angry right now. How am I going to handle this? You or you're equipped and you can handle it in the best way possible. Otherwise, if all you have is a hammer, then you just shout, 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 shout. Congratulations. You just made a you know ruined how many different relationships you could have had simply because your only tool was a hammer um but mashallah i hope that puts a nice little bow tie on this articulating emotions for those of you again by all means you're more than welcome i invite i humbly invite you to visit kalam.ca and feel free to share this around or you know if you are looking at the recording you're more than welcome to leave your questions comments down below welcome every sort of dialogue in any way, shape, or form. Jazakallah khair, Brother Maruf, as always, for facilitating discussion. And Sister Hodan, thank you so much for the Q&A. Until next time, enjoy your Juma. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.